Hi, I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham, and this is Business Line with a selection of stories shaping business and investment across the globe. Brought to you from the top of the world's tallest structure, it's the Burj Khalifa in downtown Dubai. The rapid spread of the coronavirus from the Chinese city of Wuhan to dozens of countries has caused widespread global panic and sent ripples through the Chinese stock market. But where some see uncertainty, others see opportunity. China has waged a multi-pronged attack on the novel coronavirus COVID-19. While scrambling to contain its spread and treat the ever-swelling number of infected, Chinese authorities also moved to protect the economy and bolster business. We are watching and monitoring the situation very carefully. We are very happy that the authorities in China have taken every precaution that they can. They've acted very swiftly. Most likely scenario we still believe is a V-shape impact in which there is a, uh, a substantial drop in economic activities and then a fast and effective rebound. Among a string of measures, the People's Bank of China injected liquidity into the markets in mid-February, a move welcomed by investors and the International Monetary Fund. In economic terms, what China has done is very welcome. First, an injection of liquidity. It boosted in dollar terms $115 billion, the liquidity. It has cut interest rates appropriately. You know, investing in the markets um, in any given time will have a, a crisis uh, to deal with that will affect uh, the market and the volatility that comes with it. Um, but history will tell you that these are the most effective in times to invest is in the time of, of, of opportunities like this. And the Chinese market presents a wonderful long-term investment opportunity. But the Chinese authorities also faced criticism for travel bans and citywide lockdowns dubbed draconian. Several government critics have been silenced or faced arrest, but major multinationals, including L'Oreal and Toyota Boshoku, quickly reopened plants in a mark of confidence at how China is dealing with the crisis. All our employees in Shanghai are ready to return to work. In addition, most of our 50 Japanese workers are in Shanghai. We believe we should go through this difficult time with China together. Whilst companies operating in China are keen to project confidence despite the obvious challenges, the message from the World Health Organization is clear. Crises like these should breed solidarity, not stigma. An unprecedented transformation is taking place within the healthcare sector, driven by artificial intelligence and big data. Almost every operation, from surgical to administrative, is being positively disrupted. Euronews caught up with some heavy hitters at Arab Health 2020 here in Dubai to find out more. 55,000 attendees from 159 countries touched down in Dubai this February to mega healthcare conference Arab Health 2020. Arab Health is uh, one of these top three shows in the world. You have people coming from Asia, from Africa, from the Middle East, from Turkey, from Eastern Europe, coming all here. You will find the latest technology the whole equipment, okay, that you can ever dream of, sessions, education, teaching. Artificial intelligence seemed to be on the tip of everyone's tongue. It has the potential not only to save lives, but also time, money and resources. The investment that inject right now for artificial intelligence all over the world is $6.6 .6 billion. By 2026, it will achieve an annual saving of 150 billion a year. In G Healthcare, we invest almost half of our R&D in digital and AI. AI is going to be much faster than the human brain to just take all these insights, put them together, and make sure that we make something out of this data. You can have a lot of data. If you don't use it for a reason, then the data is a waste. And artificial intelligence is trying to make sure the use of the data is serving the patient when it comes to precision medicine and driving outcome, clinical outcome, and serving the caregivers to save time and cues uh, saving also some uh, cost when you don't have to repeat exams. But what were some of the AI-powered technologies that were unveiled at the conference? We introduced the robotic surgery, is the latest technology. Robotic surgery, it's an assistant with the better results, uh, short length of stay, 
more accurate, and overall, it's most most cost efficient. Command center with G Healthcare, which will give uh, a hospital management uh, a, a live view on what's happening in different wards. Uh, if there is any decision they need to make to streamline a queue or to discharge a bed or to move a patient to the next step, uh, it's going to help them be more efficient, more productive, uh, fill beds much faster, and also discharge patients much faster. I think this is going to transform the whole way we look at healthcare efficiency. It certainly would seem that thanks to AI and machine learning, we can expect an era of more streamlined and efficient healthcare in the very near future. Cars, buses, bikes and rickshaws, India's biggest auto show was abuzz with electric vehicles this year. And despite the fact that very few Indians have yet forked out for the pricier, battery-powered vehicles, manufacturers see a mammoth market just around the corner. Indian car manufacturers are backing eco-friendly electric cars in a market where price sensitivity and lack of infrastructure has kept buyers mostly at bay. At the Auto Expo 2020 in New Delhi, almost every car manufacturer had a selection of battery-powered vehicles. The Indian government has set a deadline of 2023 for three-wheel vehicles to go electric, with two-wheel scooters set to follow suit by 2025. Good news for companies prepping for the switch. Now we are switching over to an entirely different uh, powertrain, which is the uh, electric powered by battery. So I think India is very much and uh, very rapidly evolving on that path. And next five years, I would project something like 25 to 30 percent of the entire uh, vehicle population uh, going electric. But according to a report by independent rating agency ICRA Limited, only 3 to 5 percent of Indian passenger vehicles will be electric by 2025 because of high prices and an inadequate public charging infrastructure. It won't take off just like that, but it has to be step at a time, one car at a time, and we are happy that ZSEV, what we have launched, uh, we got 2,800 bookings in less than 27 days without revealing the price. We just indicated a kind of a range. So that tells you that some consumers are ready and they're willing to experiment, and from our side, that puts more on us because we need to be part of the infrastructure creation. It's a matter of getting exposed to a new technology, it is a matter of charging infrastructure coming. It is a matter of more and more choices coming. Well, that is a wrap for this edition of Business Line, but be sure to join me again next time for a roundup of the trends and events making their mark on the business landscape. I'll see you next time.